Man, do we have a treat for you tonight. One half of the seminal rap duo Mob Deep, who had us all stuck off the realness, originated the Dunn language, hip hop's official H and I C, internet. Let's welcome to the Combat Jack Show and Complex TV, the infamous Prodigy. What's going on, man? Yeah, yeah. Yo, it's so good to see you again, man. Yeah, man, good to see you, man. It's, it's like every year I get a yeah. chance to interview, man. This is the third year in a row. You nice, know, I see you nice. doing big things. You too, man. Now, now, I remember you writing about your pops taking you to do, some, to do a crime once. Yeah. Like, let's talk about that, man. Um, yeah, my pops was crazy, man. He was like, he was like, he always proved, he had to prove himself mm. his whole life. He was like the rich kid right. from Jamaica, Queens or whatever, he in the hood, because they grew up right there and they, she kept her business right there also, right. you know what I'm saying? So it was like my pops growing up, he had to always prove himself and fight and all that. So, you know, he became like real tough. Like he was in the military, you know, he had his own, he was a karate sensei. He had his own karate school. Um, and uh, he was a uh, he was a Green Beret, mm. you know what I mean, in, in, in the military and went out and uh, we're talking. About he you. was like real, real, like a tough person. Like right. my pops was a tough person, like you know what I'm saying. And you know I heard stories. My, you know my mom used to tell me stories and so how she, uh, how he grew up, you know what I mean. So it was like uh, he was addicted to heroin mm. from the age of 14. Mm. You know what I mean? Like that was like the thing to do back in the days. Right. Like it was like smoking weed almost. Like he was a kid doing that. Was that shit, Molly like, back then? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And he he got addicted to it, and um, he was getting a lot of trouble. Like the drugs, I guess, you know, made you know, you know, make you rational. Right. You know what I'm saying? So he was getting a lot of trouble, like robbing spots. He he uh would get do like big sell guns, like do deals like that, selling drugs, whatever, whatever. And, and, and he didn't really have to. Yeah, he didn't have to, you know what I'm saying? But he didn't want to run in his mom's with his habit shit, right. like, you know what I'm saying? Right. And, and, she and plus she, she was, had the attitude, like she was gonna help him in life, but she ain't gonna take care of him, right. you know what I'm saying? Like she was like that type of person, but at the same time, she would make sure he was straight, right. though. Every time he would get locked up, she'd bail him out, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, she would she would help him do certain things. He needed a car, boom. You know, you need right. a car. You know what I'm saying? Hey, um, you know what I mean? Like just certain shit. But she's not gonna like sit there and just, sit, just fund him. Right. Of course, life. of course, like, not. She had of course, not. So you know, my pops. You know, when he got older, and him and my mom split up. You know, they was going through. He was going through a real bad situation, and um, he kidnapped me. Mm. You know what I'm saying? One time. I wanted to go, though. Right. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I wanted like to be with like my You didn't feel like nothing was wrong. You just, yeah, you just, yeah, you I just didn't know it. Right. that it's I got kidnapped. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I was, <laughs> he just told me, we're going <laughs> to go have some fun for a little while. I live over here for a minute, do something wrong, okay. wrong whatever. I was yeah, like, yeah, that's let's fucked go. up, though. <laughs> he didn't get no Amber Alert put on him. <laughs> See, black kids, they don't get no Amber Alert. <laughs> we in the car, and I don't know where we going. He's like, yo, come on, we got to do this thing real quick. We're going to go on. So in the car, he's like, I'll be right back. And boy, he got out the car, went in the store. I'm sitting there, I don't know what he's doing. He come out, boom, with a big ass bag, like a uh, supermarket brown paper bag mm. full of jewelry, like. Jewelry? Yeah, jewelry. Throws it in the back. I'm like, oh, all right, whatever. I don't know what's <laughs> going on. And he bouncing, right? So then the police chasing him. We getting the police chasing. Now I'm figuring out, oh, shit, now he telling me what's happening. Right. So now I'm like, wow. And how you, what's going on through your little mind? I was like, I was like, uh, I was probably like eight, maybe eight. seven or eight. It was around. Damn, that. you going up too, yeah. fam? <laughs> it was like around that age. Like After seven, seven they, they you some kind of accomplice. <laughs> well, so I just remember they, they they finally caught up with him. He he came to his senses, whatever. And he pulled over, and I was sitting in the back holding his hand. His hands were cuffed, and I'm holding his hand like mm. I don't know what's going on. I'm, I'm shook. I'm like, what the fuck? You know what I'm saying? So um, yeah, we get to the precinct and. You know, they, the, uh, the police called my mom to come get me or whatever, whatever. She came and got me, and it was over after that. That's crazy. She was like, I'm not fucking with this nigga again. <laughs> just took my son to rob something, like, uh. out of here. And that's when they were like... Now, now, I mean? now, now, living through that, man, did that affect you in a way also that attracted you to that type of lifestyle? Yeah, because my, my pops was just... 
a wild dude, man. Mm. You know what I mean? He, he taught me a lot of fearlessness. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Pops is a serious dude, like, you know what I mean? Grew up, he grew up tough, and, and, and he wanted his son to be tough like him. Get ready for combat.